Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, I want to talk about the role of uh, complex numbers in uh, quantum computing. As I told you before, uh, complex numbers are uh, extremely important to express uh, quantum computing uh, probability, quantum computing uh, uh, calculation. In these lectures, I want to focus on what are the interesting, almost exotic uh, effect of using complex number when doing quantum computing. For doing that, I will uh, anticipate some important concepts about quantum computing, such as the quantum bit or qubit. However, qubit and quantum uh, bit are not the topic of this lecture. We will come back to this very important concept later on. I just use them to give you exposure on what is the impact of using complex number in quantum uh, computing. So I'm going to anticipate this important concept that is the concept of a quantum bit or a qubit in short. What you need to know in this lecture is that we can represent a quantum bit as a, a complex vector of size 2. So here is a, our column vector with the two elements C0 and C1. So these are two elements. The important part of this quantum bit is that uh, these two numbers are a complex number. A second important concept is that we are going to use the C0 and C1 that are complex number to represent the probability of measure either state 0 or a state uh, 1. So we encapsulate in these two complex numbers the probability of either measure 0 and 1. It turns out that uh, a quantum bit can be in uh, so-called the superposition of state, both of 0 and 1. And the probability of finding after the measure the quantum state is in state 0 or 1 is expressed by a complex uh, number. So this is very different from the classical case where we express our probability as a real number. So for instance, we use 0.1 to say that the probability is 10% of measuring a certain thing. We are not using real number here, we are going to use a complex number. So this is important for all the course. We're going to represent our quantum system using arrays, using vectors, using matrices of complex number. In particular, when we are using quantum bits or qubits, we are going to use array of the kind that you see on this lecture. The important part is that the square of these two numbers is going to uh, can be interpreted as a, a probability. Particularly C0 square is to be interpret, interpreted as the probability that after measuring the qubit it will be found in the state in the state uh, zero. On the contrary uh, C1 that is being a square can be interpreted as the probability of measuring the qubit in the state uh, uh, 1. Note that uh, since uh, a real number can be also seen as a complex number, because uh, it can be seen as a complex number with uh, imaginary part equal to 0, any, any bit that using um, the real number is also a qubit. So let's go back uh, to these uh, main important concepts that we are going to use complex number to describe the probability of either measuring 0 or uh, state 1. So when we measure a qubit, it automatically becomes a bit, so the real uh, number. And we will never see or observe or imagine the general qubit with the two complex number. This is often visualized in, in this way. So we have uh, our quantum state that is uh, described by these uh, column vectors in not and C1. These are complex number uh, values, uh, values arrays where C0 square is the probability of a measuring state 0 and C1 square is the probability of a measuring state uh, 1. So what are the, the interesting part about using complex number instead of real uh, number for probability? This makes things particularly interesting. So when we, when we use real number, and particularly we use real number probabilities, 
the total probability by summing up the probability must always increase. It always can increase. So in this particular case, for instance, uh, we have uh, P1 and P2 that uh, represent the probability of uh, finding our system in uh, two different states, state 1 and state 2. When we sum it up, uh, this uh, probability expressed with the real number, this sum will be always greater than the single probability. So P1 plus P2 is always B larger or equal, in case one of these is equal to, to, to 0, than the single probability. So either P1 or uh, P1 and P2 uh, take each one uh, separately. It turns out uh, that uh, this property does not hold anymore when doing uh, quantum computation with the probability expressed with a complex number instead of real number. In fact, complex numbers can cancel each other and lower the probability. So this is something that we do not have really experienced. We have the probability, the two events happen, we sub it up, we expect that the total probability is going to, to be higher than the uh, probability of the, of the single event. So this does not happen. So complex, num complex number can cancel each other and lower the probability. Complex number have this property that if we take uh, the modulo of C1 plus 2 need to be bigger than C1, it also does not need to be bigger than uh, C2. So let's uh, see an example of uh, this so-called of cancellation of probability. We said that you know if we sum it up at uh, two probability, not necessarily that the sum is going to greater or equal than the single uh, probability. So let's take uh, two numbers, C1 and C2. And in uh, quantum computing, we take this uh, probability. So we told that the probability of observing, for instance, uh, quantum bit in state one, uh, we take the, uh, the square of the complex uh, number and the same things we can, uh, we can do uh, for C2. So the, the two single probability in this case are uh, 34 and uh, 13. I'm going to check if uh, the property of summing up the two probability still holds. And this does not, right? As you can see, if we take the sum and then we uh, square them up, we found that the sum of the probability is equal to 5, right? So we, we have some cancellation effect when using complex number. And this is both uh, less than the single probability. So uh, we have a 5 uh, that is less than 13, right? So it's less than uh, C2 squared, but also less than uh, uh, 34, that is the single probability. So you saw how, how beautiful and how counterintuitive is the, this property. So in all the quantum computation that we, we do using a complex number, this cancellation effect will be around, right? And we introduce extremely interesting, extremely counterintuitive um, effects on our quantum computation. So I'm really glad, you know, to, to spend a little bit more time on this concept so you can later on appreciate the beauty of using complex number in quantum computing and the important uh, impact that uh, it does have on quantum computation. But what is the physical uh, mechanism that induced that? Well, we need to go back at uh, thinking about uh, complex number as uh, a potential way to describe a wave, right? So we saw in one of the first lectures about the Euler formula, where we have this exponential that can uh, uh, exponentially be imaginary number that can express as a sinusoidal. So the fact that the complex number might cancel each other out when added has a well-defined uh, physical meaning in quantum mechanics, uh, but also in the classical field when uh, dealing with, uh, with the waves. So if we have two waves, one and uh, two, and we try to that, and in this particular case, and they are in the opposite uh, phase, they cancel out. So if we do this addition, the 
total wave will actually disappear. So we will have just a, a flat. So you see how this cancellation is already present uh, when using um, wave. This particular phenomenon is called interference. And when we cancel out, it's called uh, destructive interference. And is one of the most important effects in quantum theory and is one of the most uh, interesting effects that uh, will introduce um, you know, some counterintuitive results in our computation. So we're going to see all these phenomena in the next uh, uh, few lectures when uh, they'll be out on uh, quantum bit, um, qubits, and uh, how to move from classical to, to, to quantum. So in this lecture, I introduced some new concepts about quantum qubit. This was not uh, you know, the focus of the lecture. We will look at them more deeply in the next few lectures. However, I really want to, to make you think about what, uh, which interesting effects comp the usage of complex number in quantum computing introduce in quantum computing. So this is my last uh, slides and talk to you soon.